Hello, welcome to a quick demonstration on how to create a price and value factor table. I'll show you the quickest way of actually doing that and uh, probably show you uh, two different methods that you can actually use to use the Excel function, the price and value function in Excel uh, using two alternative methods, one using the dialog box and one just calling up the function itself. Right, so I'll show you both, uh, both, you know, both, both methods. Hopefully you'll find one of them a lot more useful to you. Okay, so what I've done, I've done some preliminary work here just to kind of create the screen so that uh, I can spend more time demonstrating how to actually do it rather than typing in all the introductory information out there. Uh, but uh, just as a background, uh, pr the present value factor table is also known as the discount factor table in some circles and is a financial tool that is actually used to calculate the present value of future cash flows at different interest rates and time periods. So it helps determine how much a future cash flow is worth in today's dollars. So as you can imagine, it's a very useful tool that one must have handy whenever they are doing those kind of calculations. So in many cases, you may find you can actually look up that information and find it on the internet these days. So internet is actually a very good resource. Uh, for example, if I go on the internet, I've already searched the present value table here that is actually downloadable. And uh, so it's pretty much that which we want to actually create. Um, you know, so you can access this of, uh, from the internet or if you've got a, a finance or an accounting textbook, you can also find at the back of the book that there's always going to be some tables like that that you can find in uh, handy to use. So, so again, uh, there could be situations where you actually, uh, you're actually pressed that uh, you need to create your own table. So that's actually the main purpose for this particular demonstration. Right, there could be situations where you don't have access to the internet, you don't have even access to any textbook that can actually have those tables at the back. And so because of that, it's necessary that you actually get to know the alternative methods of generating these types of tables. So as you'll see, uh, a, at the top here, we'll need to put in across the rates, right? So the rates from 1% upwards now i can also show you a shortcut for creating this so uh decimal and we can convert this into percentage and then excel is so smart that once you've actually introduced some sequence you can actually use an autofill right to drag to the right and it will execute that particular sequence as you can see all i had to do was uh, um, I create the first two and then I used I select them and then uh, uh, Excel was actually able to do the rest so here I want to go up to about 24 percent then the number of periods which is the number of years right because whenever we are calculating uh, present value we are actually looking at a future date and so we need to factor that into consideration as well so once again here I've just uh, typed the first two years and then I'm using the fill handle again and I want to go up to 30 thereabout. That's uh, pretty much the standard practice. But what you tend to find is that when you look at those tables, um, they don't necessarily have all, all, the, all the percentages there or the rates. Some rates are actually skipped because there's some odd rates that are never used at all by the bank, <laughs> right? Okay, so once we have actually set up our table like this, we can go ahead and create a formula, a present value formula that we can actually use here to generate uh, the factors. And we just create it once and then we can copy it across and then we can copy it downwards. And again, I'll be able to show you um, why it's possible for you to copy it across and then copy it downwards and while it's actually calculating the correct factors. So here we go. So the first method you could actually use uh, is to call up the function. So you enter the equal sign, and then when you type in PV, which is present value, uh, the function is actually called up. So we can double click on it like that. And it will pretty much show you uh, what you need to consider 
is you generate this particular formula. So it's saying what is the rate? So in this particular case, we don't, we don't want to hard code the rate. We want to click on it, right? But now what we want to do is that we want to make sure that when we copy this formula across, it's going to maintain the row number, which is the row number five. So we should have, we should have a relative referencing or semi-relative referencing where we would want to fix the row number, which is actually number five. You can use the F4 key on your keyboard, which is the function key four. When you press it once, you can see it puts in, it inserts the dollar signs, which means this is absolutely referenced. If you press again, it removes uh, the absolute referencing from the column, right? We do not want the column to be fixed. We want it to be a relative. In other words, we want it to change when I'm copying the formula across. But it's the row that we do not want to change, right? So, so far, this is basically what we wanted. So we put in a comma. When we do that, we can see that now the number of periods is now in bold right which means that's our next consideration so the number of periods we know we begin with year number one once again we have to do our um, relative uh, referencing there so f1 and we want the column to remain the same so in other words that a should not change when we copy that formula across or downwards so we press again press again until we see a dollar sign to the left side of the column letter then we know we are actually good to go then we put in a comma now the next thing is saying payment it's not payment that we need it's the future value that we need because remember that we want to calculate the present value of a future value so we put another comma to bypass the pmt which is the payment now that we're on future value uh, because you want to calculate the factors we just put in a minus one remember that so even if we were actually using an actual amount we would still put a minus so that the value the result is going to be positive if we do not excel by default we'll make the the result a negative value that's the reason why we put in a minus we lead whatever we want to put there with a minus and so minus one means that it's going to be a factor that's going to be calculated not an actual uh, amount right then we'll put in a closing parenthesis then we'll press enter and we can see that we have actually generated uh, the first factor now all we can do now is we can use our autofill or our fill handle here right we place our pointer on that square and then our pointer changes into that black thin cross and then we drag to the right up to 24 percent and then we drag downwards while it's still selected and we fill up the page just like that right so the table is actually created now, I did promise that I was going to show you an alternative method. So I can undo, <laughs> I can undo, right? I'm not scared of undoing what I just did. Now, we want to use a dialog box instead of what we did last time. Last time we entered the equal sign and then type in PV, PV. So we called up the function. Now this time we actually want to uh, use a dialog box uh, so that you can see whether you prefer that method or not so there's the insert function uh, available out there that fx so if you click on it it opens up this dialog box and so we can look for a pv if we don't see it we can just type it in and then we say go it will actually show up for us but in this case because i've recently used it it was actually available already it was already selected so you click on that we go ahead and say okay all right now we've got a dialog box. Let's see if this is going to be a little bit easier for you, right? So here it says rate, and we know this is actually the rate, and we do exactly the same thing. We want to make sure that the, the raw number is not going to change. The, so we use the function key four, and uh, so we want to make sure there's a dollar sign to the left of the raw number, right? 
then now this time we're not we are not putting in a comma like we we're doing on the previous one because we've got a dialog box so simply go directly into uh, the next box where the next selection is in this case it's actually number of periods so i click on that and uh, again is before i use the f4 key i want to uh, to fix the column so the letter a so i want to have a dollar sign to the left of a letter a and then here we are skipping payment because you want f which is the future value so you just enter minus one okay and you can see there on the screen we have exactly the same formula that we actually created earlier then you go ahead and say okay and now that is there we can just go ahead and use our fill handle drag to the right and use our fill handle drag downwards and before we know it we've actually filled up our screen you can see you just created the formula once and then just copied it across so the absolute referencing same absolute referencing was very very critical in that particular regard because it enabled us to create the formula once so we can just copy it across and copy it downwards that way it increased our productivity so we became much more efficient because we're actually using the much more dynamic way of creating our formula so now that we have got uh, the the present value factor table uh, just briefly what does this actually signify it simply means that as time lapse uh, whatever money uh, we have on hand will actually lose value depending on the discounting rate right whatever the going rate is at the bank so the assumption is that your money is supposed to be in the bank earning interest right so if it's not it's actually losing its value so the lower the interest rate the slower it's actually losing value here you can actually see for example uh here we are saying year one 99 percent so whatever was 100 percent will be 99 percent worth and in year two 98 percent worth you can see because it's only one percent interest rate it's actually declining at a very slow rate let's for argument's sake let's say let's use 10 percent you can see 10 percent at the end of year one the money is already valued at it's only 91 percent in year two 82 percent in year three 75 percent you can see that it's actually declining faster because the interest rate we're actually using is also high right so basically that's the significance of the present value factor table so all you will be doing is that let's say for example you had a thousand dollars right and the interest rate is actually going to be let's say uh one percent in year six a thousand dollars will be worth 942 dollars right so it's declining at a very slow pace compared to year six of ten percent a one thousand dollars will be 564 by year six so basically that's that's the significance of this particular table so i thought i would just slide in a, a discussion around that so that you can appreciate the present value factor table a little bit more what is its actual significance? we can use this to evaluate what the present value of a future value is right today so we're actually able to do that using this type of a table otherwise that concludes a demonstration for you i hope i did not take you too long to grasp some of the concepts uh, but however i just wanted to make sure that at least i can go a step further and kind of uh, illustrate the significance of the or uh, you know of this particular table and the difference it can actually make so that when you're actually generating it in future you know its value right otherwise that's all i have for you thank you so much for watching and uh, again uh, please uh, if you found this video helpful like it share it and be sure to subscribe to the channel so that i can continue to uh, produce some useful resources that can really help you and again above all do not forget 
to make a comment, uh, give me your feedback so that I can continue to see areas where I can actually improve and see areas that are much more of interest to you. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.